looking at Hathaway Shack for 80 years. Fans have come to this little band box on the east side of South Bend to see the best in high school basketball. And it's here again tonight. The Riley Wildcats at 15 and five take on the sixth ranked John Adams Eagles at 19 and one on the 46th game of the week. And how you doing everybody? Alongside the Hall of Famer, Bob Nagel, and with the courtside Hall of Famer, Bo Hunt, it's Chuck Freebie. Great to have you with us for what we think will be a great night of basketball on TV 46. Riley has won eight out of nine, Bob. They are a red hot ball club and they have a red hot player in Blake Wesley, the young man who will play his college ball just a little bit north of here on Twickenham at the University of Notre Dame. Why are things clicking for Alex Daniels team right now? Well, I think it's the, the total chemistry and the leadership too from uh, Blake Wesley. He's an outstanding scorer. He plays defense. He rebounds and he passes the ball pretty well and he, he just sees an aggressive guy he had 46 the other night. Got a chance to see him against Michigan City. But they also have Jackson Compley who can light it up. And they've got a, a great outside shooter in Philip Robles who's really come into his own this year. But they're going to need to avoid foul trouble. They're going to need to find a way to be balanced on the boards. And they're going to have to really compete here tonight against Adams. The Adams Eagles are that Gene Hackman team out of Hoosiers to a certain extent. Five guys functioning as one. The starting lineup they'll put on the floor tonight has scored over 4,200 career points. What makes that group so good? Well, last year they graduated 96 points. They brought back over 1,500. These guys have been together. They've been undefeated last year in conference play, trying to do it again this year. And when you think about the names, you know, uh, who do you want to focus on? Well, you got King, you got Columbus, you got Jeffries, you got Worsham, and of course you got Braden Saxon. So when you have that kind of a lineup, the other team says, okay, we'll put our best defender on this guy and second best defender. Well, we don't have enough guys to cover all these, and that's really what's made him so effective because Chad Johnson's done a good job of focusing on who he wants to score. Bo Hunt, as usual, joins us from the sidelines tonight. Bo, it's a little bit like the St. Joe Marion game we had last week and the fact that you have two rivals who will meet again more than likely in the sectional in just a couple of weeks. So who is this game bigger for tonight, Riley or Adams? I think it's a big game for both, but a little bit more for Adams, I believe. Just these, this group has been together for so long, and, you know, they got the current streak going with the conference and their home court advantage and stuff like that. So I think it's a little bit bigger for Adams to really go undefeated in the conference, win this conference outright tonight with the win, and not have to worry about next week going uh, against New Prairie. So I think it's a bigger game tonight for Adams just in the aspect of conference, home court, things of that nature, and of course, bragging rights, guys. Bo mentioned the streaks, 22 in a row in the NIC, 18 in a row in this place, and you know what? Riley does not care. We've got the opening tip coming your way, but first, the pregame show brought to you by Jordan Automotive comes your way next on the 46th Game of the Week. This is the WHME TV 46 High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by TCU, Aegis Dental Group, Bills Heating, Tipping Point Basketball, Jordan Automotive Group, Electrical Workers 153, and Silla College, Wolverine Mutual Insurance, Crown Trophy, Imagineering Finishing Technologies, St. Andrews Products, and the IHSAA. And this edition of the 46th Game of the Week is being brought to you in part by the Jordan Auto Group. Simple, easy, stress-free. Welcome back to the east side of South Bend. Riley and Adams in a city rivalry tonight as they meet for the 143rd time. Time now to look at our keys to win brought to you by the Jordan Auto Group. We'll start with the visitors, and when you start with Riley, you start with Blake Wesley. 6-5 and a senior, as we mentioned, headed to play for Mike Bray at the University of Notre Dame. He's averaging 29 points and six rebounds a game, and he had a career-high 46 on Tuesday night. But lately, especially second half of the season, he's had a lot of help from Philip Robles. 5-9, senior scoring 12 points a game. He is lighting it up from three-point range at 44%, and he has had four games of 20-plus this season. The keys to win for Alex Daniel and the Riley Wildcats. Well, he would like for his team to play with poise. This will be an intense game from start to finish. They got to take care of the basketball. Turnovers equal points when Adams takes off. And they got to be ready to guard the versatility. And the Adams can do so many things. They've got to be ready. Alex Daniel in his first year doing a great job. 15 and 5. And he's not worried about one guy from Adams. He's worried about all five. Uh, all five of them. Uh, I think I put a lot of good basketball players on the floor 
Um, they got some special players, but I think the, the versatility of King and, and Saxton really stand out to me. Um, they're able to guard bigs on the other end and then uh, go around bigs on the other on the other side of the floor. So that makes them a tough matchup. So we got to do a good job of staying in front of those guys and taking away what they do well. When Alex Daniel mentions King, he's speaking of Lynn King, who has emerged as the leading scorer and rebounder on this Adams team this year. The big 6'3 senior averages nearly 14 points, seven and a half points a game, and he is one of their top snipers from three-point range. He gets a lot of help from the young man that runs up from the point, and that's Quintez Columbus. The 5'10 senior averaging 13 points and four and a half rebounds per game, but he's also doing a great job distributing the basketball, and he'll want to play well, particularly tonight. After all, he's a cousin of Blake Wesley. The keys to win for Chad Johnston and the Adams Eagles. Well, the number one key is to limit their turnovers, but they have to stay aggressive. That's their style, and they've got to be aggressive on the board. You know, miss shots can uh, wind up as entry passes if Riley gets the rebound, and they've got to make their free throws, and that uh, is a work in progress for this team, and they've got to be ready for tournament time, and the free throw shooting is so, so important. Chad Johnston now in his 19th season as a head coach and he's doing a great job here at Adams High School and he's got a lot of respect for the neighbors from down on the south side. It's a great, great matchup. Two quality, quality teams. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I think um, uh, Crosstown rivals and two of the better teams in the area in the state. So I'm really excited about the challenge that we're going to have tonight. Anytime two South Bend teams get together, it's a big deal. It's a shame we couldn't pack this gym tonight because of COVID. But we're glad you're with us. Those have been the keys to win. From Jordan Automotive, the tip-off between Riley and Adams is next on 46. This edition of the 46 Game of the Week is being brought to you by Tipping Point Basketball. It's Michiana's number one training academy. Starting lineups being introduced here at Hathaway Shack. Here's Bob Nagel. Well, the Riley Wildcats and the Adams Eagles will both start five seniors. It's kind of uh, different for us, but Blake Wesley is a 6'5 senior. He wears number zero. He'll be at a guard. Philip Robles, a 5'9 senior, wears number five. He'll be at a guard for Riley. Inside will be Nate Mock. He's number 12. He's a 6'5 senior playing it forward. Davian Anderson is a 6'4 senior. He'll be playing inside as well, along with Jackson Copley. Copley is wearing number 24. He's a 6'3 senior. For the Adams Eagles and the Adams Eagles starting lineups tonight brought to you by the Adams Booster Club. And uh, for Adams, number two is Braden Saxton, a 6'4 senior forward. Chuck Worsham wears number three. He is a 5'10 senior guard. Lynn King wears number four. He's a 6'3 senior forward. Quintez Columbus, a 5'11 senior, will play at a guard. He wears number 11, and number 22 is Sidney Jeffries. He's a six-foot senior. He'll play at a forward for Adams. This is the 143rd meeting on the hardwood between these schools. Adams with a short lead in the series. They won it last year at Riley by a count of 61-55. And the officials for tonight's game, Raymond Dix, the man in the middle. He's flanked by Daniel Escalante and Christian Flores. Time now for checking the uniforms for tonight's game brought to you by St. Andrew's Products. First of all, for the visitors from Riley High School, they will be wearing blue uniform with white numbers and gold trim. The home team, the Adams Eagles, will be in their white uniform with red numbers and blue trim. And these teams look great tonight, and St. Andrew's Products can do the same for your team. Reach them at sales at standrewscorp.com. Here with tonight's play-by-play, -play, which should be a classic matchup, here's our my partner, Chuck Freebie. Raymond Dix ready to throw it up. A spirited but small crowd here held down by the COVID restrictions. I have the feeling if we didn't have those restrictions, they'd be hanging from the rafters here at the shack tonight. Braden Saxton will jump against Davion Anderson. Saxton wins the tip. Adams has the ball. The Eagles come in with a record of 19-1, 9-0 in the NIC. Their best wins have come against Marion, Carroll, and Chesterton. Chuck Worsham to Braden Saxton with the basketball. Adams beat Mishawaka on Tuesday night by a count of 62-52. Quintez Columbus for three. 
No good. And the rebound to Davion Anderson. Here come the Riley Wildcats. They are 15 and 5 on the season. They've won eight of the last nine. They've hammered Michigan City on Wednesday night, 88-52. Anderson misses the elbow jumper. Columbus the rebound. And you'll see up and down action tonight. Look at Quintez. Serpentine for two. The other way, Wesley lost the handle. It goes to Adams on the turnover. And take another look from Aegis Dennis Group at this beautiful move by Quintez Columbus. Dexterity with both hands for Q. Got some skills. This, both these teams, just terrific athletes. Columbus typically runs things from the point, but really everybody on this Adams team can handle the ball. Sidney Jeffries working down low, banging against Wesley, got the bucket in the bump. <laughs> Jeffries using that football body, 6-1 and a senior, and he just went right up, and Wesley had the arms extended over him. They call it roofing, and that'll be the first on Blake, and Here's a free throw sponsored by the South Bend Community School Corporation. Jeffries, a 67% free throw shooter, misses. That's typically a problem for this Adams team and something to keep an eye on tonight. This is a head toward the tournament. That's always so important when you get in the state tournament to make your free throws. Eagles playing man-to-man, -man, but a switching man-to-man -man defense. Nate Mott finds Robles. Worsham trying to body him up, and the teardrop won't go for Robles. Columbus, another rebound. King for three from the logo. It's short. Robles with a breakout. Here's Wesley trying to go to work on Jeffries. Changes hands and delivers. Blake Wesley with the first basket of the game for Riley. And it's a 4-2 contest. We haven't even played two minutes. Jack, we talked about one of the keys. Of course, turn over there on the travel. One of the keys for Riley, stay out of foul trouble, and certainly the number one guy you got to keep safe out there is Blake Wesley. So we'll see if there's uh, an adjustment in maybe the intensity of that defense. Well, especially since he picked up a foul in the first 90 seconds, you have to think there might be a, a chance that Adams will try to attack that. Robles travel. So a so, couple of unforced errors here in the early going. As both teams may be a little bit tight, you look at Chad Johnston, the former Clay and Bethel standout, fourth year at Adams, and what a job he's done, 67 and 31, after a successful tenure in 15 years over at South Bend, Washington. And of course, he, he'd be the first to tell you, you benefit from good players, and Quintez Columbus is one. So quick in that first step. Columbus exploding right by people in its 6-2 Adams. Wesley going to bring it all the way, but hit the underside of the rim, and Adams is racing the other way. Jeffries to Saxton. Might have gotten away with the walk. Instead, it's a bucket and a bump. Here's another look from Aegis Dental Group. You make the call whether you think Saxton traveled or not. And next time, take the bus. <laughs> Saxton taking a free throw sponsored by the South Bend Community School Corporation. 60% free throw shooter. He now has 1,291 career points. And Adams has raced out to a 9-2 lead. Four of the five Adams starters have taken a shot in the ball game so far. Just three for Riley. Wesley got double team tied up. Held ball goes to Riley. Good sportsmanship shown by Adams. And really, those, these two teams know each other so well, Bob. There was a kind of a play fight when they came up to warm up today. Riley was in a circle at midcourt, and Adams decided, no, oh, that's not going to happen. Just like Jeffries decides, that's not going to happen. Out of bounds off Riley. It's Adams' ball. Jeffries was looking for a highlight there and came up a little bit short. Saxton will inbound it for the Eagles. Lead by seven. 
I would say the pace is to Adams' liking, but both of these teams like to get up and down the floor. Saxton inside with the left hand. It won't go. Got his own rebound. Puts it up. That won't go either. Three straight layups missed by the Eagles. Can Riley take advantage? It's Wesley going to the hole and drawing contact from Sidney Jeffries. First one on Jeffries. We'd like to thank Bruno's Pizza on Mishawaka Avenue for providing dinner for the production crew tonight. The team at Bruno's wishes the athletes in tonight's game all the best of luck. Bruno's a Michiana tradition. Jackson Copley drops the three. That's his 33rd three-pointer of the season. And the senior who averages 11 and a half a game brings Riley back within four. King thought about the three, but Mock was there to cover him up. Copley hit a couple of three-pointers the other night against Michigan City. He can be a very streaky shooter. Worsham inside through the contact, and it wouldn't go. Chuck Worsham will go to the line for two, but that's not necessarily a bad thing for Riley. He's only a 44% foul shooter. As you take a look at the contact underneath. Foul is on Jackson Copley, his first. Free throw sponsored by the South Bend Community School Corporation. And they celebrate its all NIC Academic Honors winner athletes. This season, 26 senior varsity athletes from across the district's four high schools received a varsity letter in their sport and earned at least a cumulative 3.5 GPA for the semester. To learn more about our athletes and the extracurricular opportunities, visit sb.school. Sign up today to become a member of Team South Bend. Worsham, the homecoming king in the fall. Headed to Wayne State to play football. His defensive backs coach there will be Lou West, the former Notre Dame defensive backs coach. 10-5, midway through the first. Worsham did a nice job. Blake Wesley covered up quickly by his cousin Quintez Columbus. Now Wesley from the volleyball line is short, and the rebound to Jeffries. Three on three, Columbus stripped by Wesley and out of bounds off Columbus. What a defensive play by Blake Wesley. Get another look at it on the Aegis Dental Group replay. And watch the good hands here by Wesley reaching in with the right and knocking it off the thigh of Columbus. Very nice. And Davion Anderson travels. Three turnovers on Riley, two on Adams. Adams leading in the boards, 5-3. This early going. Riley goes to the bench first. They'll bring in Clay Coleman, number 10, six-foot senior. He takes the place of Davion Anderson. One of the things that's uh, been interesting in the possessions for Adams, Chuck, is everybody gets a touch, it seems, every time they get down the floor. And if somebody makes a mistake defensively, they'll take advantage. Here's a baseline drive by Worsham, and he's fouled by Coleman. So Worsham goes back to the line for more free throws sponsored by the South Bend Community School Corporation. Coach Riley High School's computer science and engineering magnet program has been a leader in South Bend for STEM education the last 15 years. We offer a wide range of dual credit AP and college level computer science and engineering courses designed to prepare students for careers in STEM and beyond. The, to connect there, we connect students and uh, with internships, colleges, and jobs to prepare them for careers in their chosen fields. So Worsham got the first one to nestle in. Chuck with two points so far tonight. He averages six per contest. He was an all NIC running back. Very quick feet. And he definitely has what I would consider a football mentality. He really attacks both on offense and defense. So here's Worsham hitting three of four, and it's 12-5 in favor of Adams. Lynn Kane came in as Adams' leading scorer and checked their garden very closely. He has not scored yet in the game, but that's fine because it opens opportunities for others. Wesley found the open, Nate Mock for two. And Mock, the 6'5 senior in a transfer from Marion, gets his first basket. He really didn't get into the lineup much until that Elkhart game that we did back in early January. And since then, that's when the Cats have gotten hot because, you know what, he plays pretty decent defense. Worsham underneath for two. 
that game plan that Riley had defensively, they might not have given Worsham a lot of respect, and he's uh, taking advantage of it. Wesley had Columbus on his hip, and Ray Dix calls the push. You'll get another look at the last Adams basket by Worsham, and I agree with you, Bob. I think sometimes Chuck is the forgotten guy out there on the floor. He'd be a top player for most programs in the city, but he's fine with his role. Tyson Lee in the game now for Riley. He wears 21. The young man who will be playing football up at Western Michigan. Coleman worked his way through the lane, but the ball knocked out of bounds. Riley will maintain possession. For over 60 years, industry has relied on the great team at Imagineering Finishing Technologies. IFT is the industry knowledge source for metal finishing solutions. The medical, automotive, and defense and aerospace challenges have built our legacy. Reach us at IFTWorldwide.com. At IFT, we'll work till you're finished correctly. Coleman thought about the three. Wesley trying to reset. Volleyball line three is way off the mark. And the rebound comes to Sidney Jeffries. I don't think that's what Alex Daniel had in mind from the Riley bench. No, that is not out of his range, but. Here's Columbus knifing down the lane for two. Fuentes with six, and he has just been slashing his way to the basket tonight. One of the things, too, about Wesley, if he's uh, willing to uh, shoot that long three, He's avoiding contact, and he's already got one foul in the ballgame. Robles misses, and Lynn King gets the rebound for Adams, who can go up by double digits here in the first. And do. The three-pointer sponsored by John Adams High School. Lynn King with his 38th three-pointer of the season. Wesley tries to answer and does. Lake Wesley now with five. But Saxton goes right the other way and gets an easy layup. Adams beating Riley down the floor in transition time and again. Five players have scored for Adams, just two for Riley. Here's Coleman for three. It's short. King the rebound. And Chad Johnston wants to hold for one. Did you know the John Adams High School class of 2020 earned over $10 million in grants and scholarships for colleges and universities, and they boast over a 90% graduation rate for the past six school years. Apply now for esteemed International Baccalaureate Magnet Program at John Adams High School by visiting adams.sp.school. Chuck Worsham handles it up top. King. Lost the handle going down the lane, got it back. Too strong. The rebound to Wesley. He's got time. What a pass to Copley for two. And Riley manages to salvage something right at the end of the quarter. Blake Wesley had five in the quarter, but John Adams had plenty of answers for the Riley Wildcats, including Lynn King dialing it up from long distance. Eagles by nine at the end of one on 46. This edition of the 46 Game of the Week brought to you in part by Aegis Dental Group. That's Trusted Dentistry. We trust Bo Hunt with sideline reports. He's got one from Bill Seating. Your thoughts on the first quarter, Bo? Well, when we look at Adams, we look at such a complete team. And Bob talked about it earlier about how when they set up their offensive sets, they'd like to get everybody involved. Well, that first quarter, all five starters are in the scoring column. I think that's one of the tributes to Chad Johnson's team is just they're so unselfish and they really move the ball and they just do a great job of anybody on that in that starting lineup or that's out on the floor can score at will. And I think that's one of the biggest things that separates Adams from a lot of teams up here in northern Indiana is just their ability to score with anybody and not relying on just that one person. Guys? And, Bo, I'm curious. I want to ask you, as far as Riley's offense is concerned, it seems a little bit discombobulated. Is the problem them or is it the Adams defense? I, I think a lot of it has to do with that Adams defense. But, again, I think Riley's is a little bit out of sorts. I think a lot of it came down to Blake Leslie not making a few of the early shots, and then everybody was kind of looking at that as well. And shots just knocking down. I think they're getting the shots or just not hitting them at this point. So we know these two teams, they both like to go on runs. Second quarter brought to us by Wolverine Mutual Insurance. 
Sidney Jeffries with the right hand misses, and the rebound to Isaiah Robinson, who checks into the game. Blake Wesley into the paint, crashes in. That's a charge, his second foul. You'll get another look at this one from Aegis Dentistry. Chuck Worsham. Boy, he took that one right underneath the chin. That's probably why it got called. If you're Riley's Wildcats, not much you can do. You got to keep Wesley in the ball game, and they will. First quarter, Riley five out of twelve from the field. Adams eight out of fourteen. Down low to Saxton. He lost the handle. Tyson Lee out front to Wesley. Nice behind the back dribble, and then Sidney Jeffries with the foul. But he elevated. Watch this one on the Aegis Dentistry replay. And look how high the heads are by the rim. Wow. You know how sometimes I'll say, well, on the Nerf hoop in the bedroom? Yeah. I couldn't even do that on the <laughs> Nerf hoop in the bedroom, folks. Man, he got up there, he got a piece. Now he has two fouls, Jeffrey. So we said foul. Fouls will be a factor tonight, and uh, so far. As you see Tommy Snyder check in, 6'5", junior. Wesley at the line is a 78% free throw shooter. He is tied for third in the state of Indiana in terms of free throws made coming into the action tonight, but he only went one of two on that trip to the strike. 21-13 in favor of Adams. Adams leading on the boards, 8-4. King gets the deflection. Snyder from the foul line. It wouldn't go, and the rebound to Tyson Lee. Robles the other way. Now Coleman coming down the left side. Here's Robinson, the Concordia transfer, misses, and the rebound comes to Columbus. Adams trying to get on the board here in the second quarter. Snyder will try to oblige, but misses inside, and it's out of bounds off Saxton. As well as Adams has played offensively, Bob, they've missed a lot of shots right by the basket. They really have. They've done, uh, well, they've only taken two three-pointers. They hit one out of two, but the rest of the time, yeah, you're right, they get to the basket, but so much defensive pressure from Riley, it's been a little bit tight around the board. Meanwhile, Wesley lost the handle. And it's regained by Lee, who traveled. Not much Tyson could do that time. You'll get another look here from Aegis Dentistry. And Lee, in making this recovery, just didn't have the base under him and definitely took two steps before he got rid of it. Turnover is even at four apiece. King in the corner for three. The iron unkind. Here's Robles coming down one on one with Worsham and Phillip all the way. Missed the layup. Snyder lost the handle. It's like a soccer match out there. Adams pretty good in that sport, too. Robles averages over 12 points a game and so far 0 for 2 from the field. Meanwhile, Columbus banks home the three. It's open on Mishawaka Ave and a timeout called by Chad Johnston. It's sponsored by the Eastside Youth Baseball and Softball. Quintez Columbus uses the glass well. It's 24-13 Adams on 46. This edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Bills Heating, keeping families and businesses comfortable since 1951. Folks at St. Andrews Products, your expectations become our standards. We have the finest promotional products, advertising specialties, business gifts, and apparel. Your team handles, our team handles all embroidery and screen printing in-house to guarantee the quality that you want and the timely turnaround that you need. At St. Andrew's Products, our answer is always yes. Now what's the question? Robles brings it over the timeline for the Wildcats who trail by 11. Isaiah Robinson now handles it up top. You'll meet him at halftime, one of our TCU Student Athletes of the Week, and you'll get a chance to see him up close at the foul line here as he'll give it a strike for two. Foul is called on Lynn King. Well, 
They call it the streak here at Adams, and the Adams Eagles have put together a very nice streak in NIC play as Robinson goes to the foul line. The 42% shooter hits that one. In fact, Adams has an NIC record, 22 consecutive league wins. They eclipsed the mark set by Tom DeBate's clay team in 94-96 and Dave Hadaway's Adams team in the 70s. Robinson becomes just the fourth player for Riley to score tonight. Missed that foul shot and the rebound to King. He's had a handful of them tonight. 10-6 to six rebounding advantage for Adams. Columbus wing jumpers off the mark. Here's Robles. Wesley now for three, right over King. It's short. Snyder got the carom. Adams trying to reestablish its offensive rhythm. Just three points here in the second quarter, and yet they still lead by 10. King for three. Not that time, but look at Saxton work inside, and he'll go to the line for two. Sponsored by the South Bend Community School Corporation, you'll get another look courtesy of Aegis Dentistry. Another offensive board for Adams. Folks, Riley High School was honored with the PLTW Distinguished School Recognition for the 2019-2020 school year. The PLTW Recognition Program is designed to honor districts and schools committed to increasing student success, engagement, and achievement in their PLTW programs. These districts and schools are empowering students to thrive in an involving world and have achieved exemplary results from their PLTW programs. Saxton, one of two in this trip to the stripe. Braden now with six tonight. Riley trying to find a way to get this thing under double digits. Robles has been quiet tonight. Columbus guarding him now. They've switched a lot of men, has Adams. on Blake Wesley trying to keep some fresh legs on him. Robles lost control going down the lane, wanted a foul call, it didn't happen. Columbus has it stolen away by Copley, but right back by Snyder. And here's King in the pinball machine. He couldn't get it to go. Three on two break for Riley. Robles for three. Not this time. Saxton brings it down the floor. And loses it out of bounds. Riley knocked it out, apparently. For a game we were at earlier this year, Philip Robles really lit it up, kind of Kind of his homecoming, kind of a breaking out game, and uh, he's been really hampered tonight. You know, Adams doesn't have a 6'8 guy, but they got a lot of guys that are in that 6'3, six, 6'4 six, range, and they're tough defensively. Tommy Snyder, 6'5, but he couldn't get that one to go. Copley blocks the shot, and it's out of bounds to Adams. Riley will go to the bench, as will Adams. Davion Anderson checking back in for Riley, and we'll see our first sighting of Jesse Morgan tonight. Another look from Aegis Dental Group. This one's gotten downright sloppy here in the second quarter. It has. The pace has been pretty frenetic for uh, only having 39 points on the board. King finally triggers it to worship. Adams exercising a little patience in this possession. Morgan working against Lee. Columbus blocked by Lee, but there's Worsham to recover it. Adams just about a half step quicker than Riley tonight, and that guy is really quick. Columbus couldn't hit. Morgan, finally, the lead comes off the basket. And we've got a whistle and a foul called against Tommy Snyder of Adams. I did not exactly see what happened there, but Snyder might have gotten a little shove in on one of the Riley players coming down the floor. Could have happened, 3.09 to go. Folks, Eastside Youth Baseball and Softball, located in South Bend, was founded to provide boys and girls ages 14 to 18 in park to play baseball and softball. They're proud that so many Adams High School students have played there over the years. Sign-ups are currently open for the 2021 season, and children from St. Joseph and Elkhart counties are welcome to get their name in for the season. 
Visit eastsidebaseballsoftball.org to sign up and like them on Facebook. After Anderson missed the three, King will take his shot in this. Snyder, a great box out. That was a mismatch down low against Robles. And now Alex Daniels got to get a timeout. 2.31 to go in the first half. And the Eagles are up by 15 on their city rivals on 46. This edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you by the electrical workers of Local 153. They're making our communities brighter. 14 shots for Adams so far in the second quarter. Five for Riley. The rebounding for Adams is pretty impressive. They've got 12 rebounds, nine so far for Riley. And again, the balance of Adams showing itself tonight. You know, Chad Johnston has the luxury of coming into this game with four double figure scores headed up by Lynn King. But there you see the group. That's info you should know. Brought to you by our friends at Insula College. A really bad shooting night for Riley so far. And that's one of the reasons they're down by 15. Isaiah Robinson travels. Turnover number seven for Riley. Boy, the quickness of Adams is really something to behold. Just so many solid defensive players in that lineup. And I'm sure a lot of teams in that Plymouth sectional watching this game tonight. Is, there's a three on the way by Tommy Snyder. It's sponsored by Adams High School. That's just his third three-pointer of the season. And Adams is up by 18. Wesley will try to take matters into his own hands, but misses. Morgan with great hustle to chase down the rebound. Some of the Adams fans on their feet, extolling the virtues of their ball club. Keep in mind, Wesley has to be careful. He has two fouls, one of them on offense. And he just can't afford to be aggressive going down the lane. That's a big part of his game. Meanwhile, Columbus aggressive down the lane, and he draws contact, and he'll go to the line for two. Sponsored by the South Bend Community School Corporation. The foul called on Tyson Lee, the big fellas first. The Lather and Fade Shop has locations in South Bend, Granger, and Elkhart. Lather and Fade offers world-class barber experience, whether you want a vintage, classic, or modern look. Check out latherandfadeshop.com. Quentes Columbus now in double figures tonight with 10. He had a double-double against Penn earlier this year. 17 points and 13 rebounds. Season high 22 the other night against Mishawaka. Just a really confident ball handler. And if he can do that and hit free throws down the stretch, every coach wants a point guard that can do that. 11 points now for Q. 20 point Adams lead. Here's Robinson, top side triple off the mark. Getting good shots. I mean, you wouldn't ask for him not to take those shots, but they're just not going down. King runs right over somebody, and that'll be a, the first on Lynn. Chad Johnson will go to his bench, Bob, and he'll put in Gian Parks to take the place of King. Yeah, that is two on King. Folks, the South Bend Community School Corporation takes pride in its partnership with Ivy Tech's Associate Accelerated Program called ASAP. To learn more about this free opportunity, visit sb.school and search for ASP, ASAP. Chuck Worsham, ASAP to the basket. He has seven tonight. Anderson lost the handle. Turnovers and missed shots, the story of the first half for the Riley Wildcats. Nine turnovers, Adams has four. Chad Johnston's gonna hold for one. Folks, the ASAP program this year, even seniors from the class of 2021, will earn an associate's degree worth two years of college credits along with a high school diplomas. Another four students will meet the Indiana College core requirements worth one semester of college credit. Save money and time while you earn free college credit through the ASAP program and South Bend School. Columbus traveled. 
he felt he was shoved by Isaiah Robinson, but it was not seen that way by the men in stripes. So Riley will have eight and a half seconds here to try to mount some offense. What a screen that time. And then Wesley down the lane, but the foul was on the floor. And Chuck Worsham a little slow to get up after he got leveled by Osjean Williams. Out of contact out there, that's for sure. It's only the sixth foul on Adams, so Riley has to inbound. And the shot taken and made by Blake Wesley. Then Robinson with the steal, but he couldn't get it to go. And the first half comes to an end here at Hathaway Shack. The three-pointers and everything else dropping for the Adams Eagles. Quintez Columbus found the bank open on a Friday night, and even Tommy Snyder got into the act from three-point range. Eagles by 17. TCU Student Athletes of the Week next on 46. And welcome back to Hathaway Shack here at Adams High School. We have a chance now to meet our Student Athletes of the Week, brought to you by TCU. TCU reminds you to go online at tcunet.com and find out how you can become a member today. Well, as always, a couple of great representatives of the respective schools are with us. Harry Jeffers is with us from John Adams High School and also with us from Riley High School is Isaiah Robinson. Isaiah, first of all, congratulations on being singled out for the work you're doing, certainly on the, on the hard court, but also in the classroom. Hey, thank you, thank you. Talk about some of the things you're involved with, understanding you have some technical interest in what's going on at Riley. Uh, at Riley, uh, I just got inducted into the uh, National Honor Society and the National Technical Honor Society. And um, some classes that I take are like the radio and TV class, stuff like that. Good for you. That's uh, a pretty broad range of things uh, going on. And yeah. uh, you want to go on to college, understand you'd like to become a physical therapist. Yep. What got you inspired to that direction? Uh, I just like how they're always around sports. But at the same time, they still have like the medical field, and I like the, how the medical field works. So kind of, kind of an interesting story. You transferred to Riley from Concordia. Yep, Concordia. Something about your dad working at Adams. Yep. <laughs> which is uh, unique, but uh, also a, a nice chance for you to meet some new people, make yep. some new friends. Mm -hmm. Talk about the people in your life that have mattered for you. Uh, I would say my mom and dad, and just my sister, really matter to me the most because they're always there for me and like provide everything that I need. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Congratulations on your success and uh, representing Riley High School. Thank you. All right, Isaiah Robinson from the Riley Wildcats is our Student Athlete of the Week. And we also want to talk to Harry Jeffers from John Adams High School. And Harry, a member of the National Honor Society, in addition to being part of the basketball team here at Adams. What a year you guys are having, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, talk about your involvement with the National Honor Society. And uh, you're also involved in a little bit of a mentoring program here. Uh, yeah, I've been in the National Honor Society for two years now. Uh, just volunteering with the younger kids and whatever it is. Uh, the, I've been in the drug and alcohol prevention program at Adams. So that's uh, mentoring the younger classmen about the dangers of drugs and alcohol. Uh, that's for the past two years now, too. Well, good for you. And uh, also, uh, your involvement in basketball, you're involved in uh, a program that has really grown over the last couple of years. You've been a part of it. It's got to be pretty exciting. Yeah, it is. Really exciting. Now, you want to go on to uh, Indiana University. Yes, sir. And um, study business. That's not a bad idea. What uh, what got you going in that direction? Uh, ever since I was young, I always wanted to own my own business when I'm older. So just like, I don't know, it always sounds good to me. And it's close to home, so. Well, Indiana University is a great experience. Wish you all the best down there. Yes, sir. Talk about the people in your family that have helped you. Uh, I just want to thank my parents. You know, they push me every day, whether it be basketball, school, or extracurriculars. They've always there, been there for me to push me and all that. Well, I tell you what, it takes a team to get it done. We congratulate you on your success. Wish you all the best down at IU. Thank you, sir. All right. And by the way, Harry's only a junior, right? You're back for no, another. I'm a senior. I'm a oh, senior. you're a senior. Yes, sir. Isaiah's a junior. Okay. Uh, good luck to you. Thank you. All right. Harry Jeffers from John Adams High School and Isaiah Robinson from Riley High School. Our student athletes a week brought to you by TCU. TCU reminds you to go online at tcunet.com. Find out how you can become a member today. We're back with some halftime stats and highlights in just a moment. You're watching the TV 46 High School Basketball Game of the Week. This edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Ancilla College. We believe in you. Halftime here at Hathaway Shack. It is 36-16 in favor of the Adams Eagles as we welcome you back inside. Chuck and Bob high above the fray. 
What a dominating performance by the Eagles. It really was, and as, and as dominant as it was, Chuck, they only shot 43% in the first half, but it was plenty because uh, Riley only shot 30%. They really struggled. They got out-rebounded 18-9. to They had nine turnovers. Adams had five, and that's the difference, the gap in the scoring because uh, a lot of people uh, doing a lot of good things for Adams, but they only shot seven three-pointers, 12 for Riley, and they just weren't going in. You could see in the highlights how it got to be this way because Quentes Columbus showed electricity from the very start with that little serpentine down the lane. Blake Wesley would follow with one of his own at the other end. Looked like the game was on, but Adams just had too many weapons in the first quarter, and Columbus, really nobody could guard him in the first quarter. He had six points in the opening stance, and Jackson Copley did dial up a three to make it a four-point game at one point. But Lynn King would answer with three of his own. Those were his only three points of the first half for Adams' leading score. Meanwhile, Blake Wesley drained one from the volleyball line. He had eight in the first half. Braden Saxton with six, the good effort underneath. And then you look at the nice feed from Wesley to Copley at the end of the first quarter, but it was uh, half dominated by Adams. Tommy Snyder, three of his five right there. And then Adams would get seven out of Chuck Worsham in the half. And really right now, it's all Eagles right now. It really is. And when you look at the shooting percentage, 13 out of 30. has 10 more shots in the ballgame for Adams because of the offensive rebounds they got and because of the turnovers from Riley. And uh, the rebounding stats, the uh, turnovers tell the story here. And uh, one of the things about Riley, if they're looking for a bright spot, it is that uh, Blake Wesley got two fouls in the first half and didn't get the third one. And so um, he's able to play here in the third quarter. They're going to need him. He had nine in the first half. They got to get uh, 25 to 30 out of him if they're going to have a shot. Well, the Eagles had a hit with there's going to be a heartache tonight. Right now it belongs to Riley because Adams can do no wrong. They're looking for their 23rd in a row in the NIC, 19th in a row here at the Shack, and they lead it by 20 at the intermission. Second half play-by-play -play comes your way from the east side of South Bend after this on 46. This edition of the 46th Game of the Week brought to you in part by Wolverine Mutual Insurance. When the unexpected happens, we've got you covered. We have you covered courtside as well. 20-point lead for Adams at the intermission. Bo, I don't know whether it's easier to ask what adjustments do you make for Riley or how impressed you are with Adams. I think the biggest thing with Riley is just one possession at a time. They can't look at the end goal right now. They just got to look at one possession, take it, you know, offensively, defensively, score a basket, come down, play some defense. Don't look that you're down 20 points. And on Adam's side, they can't let up as well. They have to go after it just like they did in the first half and really be po poised to uh, finish off this game, guys. All right. Thank you very much, Bo. Third quarter read brought to us by Wolverine Mutual Insurance. Folks, do you want to be part of something greater than yourself and become globally minded and a critical thinker? Apply for the 2021-22 for the esteemed International Baccalaureate Magnet Program at John Adams High School by visiting the website at adams.sb.school. Second half begins with Riley in possession of the basketball. As you take a look at Blake Wesley, the Notre Dame commit. His season low, 17 against John Glenn. He only has eight in the first half tonight, averaging 29 a game. So Philip Robles will begin the second half with the basketball. Adams staying in man-to-man. -man. Why not? That defense was outstanding in the first half. Copley for three in the corner, can't connect. And the rebound to King. See if Riley can try to jumpstart its offense with its defense. That's usually when they're best. I like the setup on that play by Riley, but Copley just couldn't get it to go. But again, it was a good shot. Saxton underneath. Nice cut by Jeffries, and he'll go to the line for two. Sydney, a 67% free throw shooter. You get another look here from Aegis Dentistry. Beautiful pass by Saxton. Copley draws his third foul. So Sidney Jeffries at the line. All NIC football player. Couldn't get the first one to go. Whistle is. 
Copley was going to come up and switch places with one of the people on the lane, but decided not to. Chad Johnston looking on from the sideline, sees Jeffrey score his third point of the night. Career point number 965 for Sydney. Came in averaging almost 11 points a game, but again, the balance for Adams has been plenty. They really seem to be one of these teams that does not care who scores as long as they have more points than the other team at the end. And that has happened 19 out of 20 times this season. Tenth turnover the ball game for Riley. Check one of the things, too, that you notice about Adams is they spend a lot less time dribbling the ball than most of the teams that we see. They love to pass the ball. It moves faster that way. So look at them break the pressure. Just a dribble here, dribble there, and then an open three. And Saxton couldn't get that one to go, but the rebound comes to Riley. Worship, what a play. Saved it inbounds to King. Great anticipation that time. You can tell Worsham's a defensive back. Boy, not many athletes in the area have done more with what the Lord gave him. He's not overly big, but he is a tenacious competitor. I think he really appreciates playing more after that ankle injury that he had that caused him to miss all football season as a junior. And then Jeffries nails the basket. He has five, and the Adams lead is up to 23. Well, there's no reason not to go inside and go in forcefully because their biggest guy, Blake Wesley, has to be really careful. And Robles misses again on the inside. And Riley, well, Raymond Dick said it was Riley's ball, but I think the outside official had maybe a different look. TCU understands the importance of growing your future, whether you're growing your family, your square footage, or your business. TCU is here for you with financial solutions that will help you succeed. Visit TCUnet.com to start growing your future today. They're federally insured by the NCUA. They're an equal housing opportunity lender. Tenacious defense by Adams tonight. And another travel. When you talk about tenacious defense for Adams, they've really played it all year. Info you should know. Brought to us by Ancilla College. Adams has held 19 of its 20 foes this year to 60 points or less. Only Warren Central, the team that beat them, scored 66. Saxton guarded by Coleman, gets it down low to Jeffries. Adams up by so much they can afford to be patient, wait for a good shot. See if they don't find somebody that's matched up with Blake Wesley. King nearly made the backdoor cut on Mocked. Instead, he drives on him, and then Mocked erases it. But every bounce, every roll seeming to go Adams' way tonight. King for three. It's sponsored by John Adams High School. Lynn King with his second three of the night. Smooth shooter. Wesley got the ball caught on his hip, but he was fouled on the way in. Folks at John Adams Athletic Boosters provide tens of thousands of dollars to support all of JA Athletics. They sponsor team banquets and team and individual awards and letters. Over 3,000 weight room supplies were purchased last year, and every team receives a direct financial support from the boosters last year, totaling over $30,000. Please support the Booster Club through Spirit Wear, sales, volunteering to work in session stands, or become a team rep for the Booster Club. Contact the John Adams Athletic Department for more information on how you can become a supporter of the boosters. Wesley and Columbus collide, and Columbus is called for the foul. That's the second on Quintez. It'll be a common foul. 4.30 to go, third quarter, as you see on the tipping point scoreboard. That's Alex Daniel, his first year as the coach at Riley. Their fifth head coach in the last five years. Works over at the Croc Center, and they're hoping that he can give some stability to the program as Copley was standing on the line, so that's a two-pointer and seven for Jackson. At the other end, Jeffries misses the layup. And here comes Coleman the other way for Riley. He'll go the distance, but miss the layup. King and Wesley battle for the rebound. Alternating possession goes to Adams. Four 
42-18 in favor of Adams, looking for win number 20 on the season. Of course, Chuck, there's still some mathematics involved, but Adams wins tonight. They will be the NIC Conference champions. And with only one NIC game left, and they'll extend that record streak to 23 games. Coleman had it knocked away by King. Chuck Worsham will stand by near midcourt. Oh, what a pass to Jeffries, and he's fouled by Mott. Man, oh man, Adams dishes out more sweet things than Sarah Lee. Look at Jeffries go in strong there. Timeout called by Riley. It's sponsored by Eastside Youth Baseball and Softball. 3.37 to go in the third. Came to South Bend tonight, wound up in Blowout City. Adams by 24 on 46. This edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Crown Trophy. They're nationally known and locally owned. There was buzz in South Bend about this game tonight. There's buzz about the one on your screen tomorrow. South Bend Washington's girls playing for the 3A North Semi-State title against Norwell. We'll have it live on the IHSA TV site at noon and show it to you at 4 o'clock here on TV 46. What an exciting team. What a great season they have had under Steve Reynolds. Sidney Jeffries misses the first. Of course, you talk about that Washington team. You've got Steve's two daughters, Mila and Amaya. You've got Rashunda Jones, Shamara Allen. A lot of fun to watch. Norwell shoots the three very well. Should be a good matchup. Tommy Snyder with the rebound basket. He has seven tonight. Only averaging three per game, but you can see really good offensive rebounder. He had seven rebounds in the game against Mishawaka on Tuesday night. Wesley down the lane, taps in his own rebound, and he has 10. And then Worsham was thinking Snyder would make a cut. He says, son, you're a junior. You're not one of the seniors. You don't know to make that cut. Hey, we'd like to thank Bruno's Pizza on Mishwaka Avenue for providing dinner for our production crew tonight. The team at Bruno's wishes the athletes in tonight's game all the best of luck. That's Bruno's on Mishwaka Avenue in Ironwood. Ball pinballing around down there. Now Copley for three, ring it up. Jackson Copley in double figures tonight with 10, his 14th game in double figures this season. But it is still a 21 point Adams lead. And the Eagles very patient on the outside. Adams got to the free throw line 10 times in the first half. Four for Riley. King for three. Not that time. Snyder went crashing into the match to try to save it. Couldn't quite get there. It'll be Riley Ball. South Bend Community School Corporation celebrates its all NIC academic honors winner athletes. This season, 26 senior varsity athletes from across the district's four high schools received a varsity letter in their sport and earned at least a cumulative 3.5 GPA for the semester. To learn more about our athletics and extracurricular activities, visit sb.school and sign up today to become a member of Team South Bend. Jeffries will go back to the line after exploding to the basket and drawing the foul. You get another look here courtesy of Aegis Dentistry. They'll call the foul on Nate Mott, and that'll be the second on Nate. Jeffrey scored a season high 20 in Adams' win over Chesterton. Real good touch around the basket. And has a chance to be a thousand point scorer as you see Tyson Lee check back in. He's at 968 right now. Adams has one more regular season game after this, but. If the Eagles make any kind of a tournament run, Jeffries could be there at the 1K mark. <laughs> Jesse Morgan checking in the lineup now. There you see Sydney. Seven points for Jeffries tonight. 
Adams doubling up Riley. Wesley will go the distance and shoot over Jesse Morgan for two. 12 for Blake Wesley now. Morgan kicks it outside. The big load in there, isn't it? Couple of big bodies with Morgan going against Tyson Lee. The steal by Clay Coleman. Chuck Worsham harassing him. Lee drops it off for Robinson. The left hand layup is good. Isaiah Robinson's first basket of the game. 19 point game and Riley getting a little run put together here. We'll see if it lasts. You know, the Eagles spread the floor, being very patient. Under a minute to go in the third. Our broadcast being brought to you in part by Imagineering Finishing Technology, saluting the players, coaches, and all the team members who worked so hard to be successful. At IFT, we put our team to work for you, setting the standard for metal finishing solutions. Reach us at IFTWorldwide.com. We're like the teams in tonight's game, working toward a great finish. Quintez Columbus crashing into Jackson Copley there, but no call. Harry Jeffers checks into the lineup now for Adams, seeing his first action tonight. 6'3 senior, averaging two points a game. Wesley goes in strong, can't get any contact, or at least any contact call. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And now a technical foul called on Alex Daniel on the Riley bench. Alex has not been happy most of the nights. Well, I'm sure uh, Alex is upset about no call there, but the Riley fans right behind him are pretty hot about it, too. Now Raymond Dix over to try to settle things down. Folks, we want to thank St. Andrew's Products for helping our crew look good tonight. They're ready to do the same for your team. Reach them at sales at standrewsproducts.com. With all the top lines in apparel, business gifts, and advertising specialties are ready to help your school or company. At St. Andrew's Products, our answer is always yes. Now, what's the question? Columbus nets both free throws. Quintez leading all scores tonight with 13. Adams puts the lead back up to 21, and with the technical foul, they will be able to inbound it. You mentioned Columbus leading them in scoring check, but again, the balance is so impressive that you see from Adams. Seven for both Worsham and Jeffrey. Six for both King and Saxton tonight. Snyder also has seven off the bench. Jeffries handles things up top. See the clock in the bottom right-hand corner of your tipping point basketball scoreboard. Columbus dropped his man, couldn't hit the shot, then crashes in, misses that one. Battle for the loose ball. Morgan will go to the foul line after he gets fouled. Couple more good offensive rebounds for Adams. Boy, they hit those boards hard. So Jesse Morgan, a 56% free throw shooter, goes to the foul strike. 25 rebounds for Adams in this game. And just 14 for Riley. Jesse is 64% free, or excuse me, a 56% free throw shooter. He's a 6'4 senior. Copley will take the place of Tyson Lee as Riley tries to get a little more offense out there for the final six seconds. Morgan had a season high 11 in the Adams win over Bremen. Three here tonight. Wesley will go by Coastal and lose it out of bounds. Turnover number 16 of the night for Riley. Boy, that is a huge amount, but credit some to the Adams defense. Morgan from three quarter court. Won't hit that one. And the third quarter comes to an end. The Adams Eagles have come into their own nest tonight here at Hathaway Shack with emotion. They are eight minutes away from claiming the Goldsberry Trophy that goes to the winner of this rivalry. 
They lead by 22 on 46. This edition of the 46 Game of the Week theme brought to you by Imagineering Finishing Technologies, IFT, where quality is a way of life. A way of life for us, a Bo Hunt sideline report. Bo, we saw Adams in its second game of the season. Now we see them tonight in game 21. Where have you seen the most improvement from the Eagles? Well, it's not the free throw line. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think it's just the confidence that they have as a group. It's it's not just, you know, two, three, four guys that have the confidence up there. It's two, three guys off the bench as well coming in and really being confident with the ball, taking it to the hole, not being afraid to be the man out there and really stepping up. I think that's why they're just playing so well out here tonight. It does help that uh, Riley's not playing their best game of the night either, guys. Fourth quarter being brought to us by Wolverine Mutual Insurance. Philip Robles and the Wildcats have the ball. Riley improved in that quarter. Five out of 11 from the field. Wesley will go to the line for two. I believe the foul will be called here on Braden Saxton. Adams in the third quarter, three out of nine. But they get to the free throw line a bunch. And he made six out of ten. Wesley. Free throw sponsored by the South Bend Community School Corporation. Blake with 13 tonight. He has 590 points now this season. The Riley season record is held by Eric Ford, who scored 611 in 1991. Here's Sidney Jeffries carving his way down the lane, but too much French pastry. And here comes Wesley the other way. And he bumps into Ling King and will go back to the line for two more. Sponsored by the South Bend Community School Corporation. 15 rebounds now for Riley, but Adam with 25. And actually, they say that's not an active shooting foul. Common foul, and so Riley will inbound underneath their own basket. See, that's number three. And Lynn King. Copley, a deep three. Ring it up. Jackson Copley with 13 tonight, above his average. He's been sniping it from three point range. He had four of those against St. Joe and Culver Academy. He has three here tonight. But for most of the night, stone cold shooting. For Riley. Jeffries, great pass to King for two. That's good basketball, isn't it? Boy, Adams passes the ball so well. Chad Johnston made the point to you in the pregame interview, Bob, about the unselfishness as Robinson misses. Wesley misses as well. And boy, you really see it from this Adams team. Saxton with numbers. Jeffries for two. Nine for Sydney. Wesley being guarded by Worship. Three on the way is short, and the rebound to King. A bad three-point shooting night for Blake Wesley came at a bad time for the Cats. A lot of credit for that goes to that defense from Adams. Backdoor pass, but Robinson saw that one coming. And it goes out of bounds off Adams. Ted Johnson might have raised a little bit more noise <laughs> had it been a closer game, but up by 21, he's not going to bark much. <laughs> Wesley. Now to Copley over King. Airballed that one, and Saxton gets the loose change. Adams will go to 20 and 1 if they hold on to this lead with a date with New Prairie next Friday night. And then the Plymouth sectional with teams like Riley, Mishawaka, Plymouth, Culver Academy, who picked up a win over Dwajak tonight. Saxton for three. Not that time. Rebound knocked out of bounds by Columbus. It'll be Riley Ball. 
Folks, Eastside Youth Baseball and Softball, like it, located in South Bend, has been founded to provide boys and girls ages 4 to 18 a park to play baseball and softball. We're proud that so many Adams High School students have played there over the years. Sign-ups are currently open for the 2021 season, and children from St. Joseph and Elkhart counties are welcome to get their name in for the season. Visit eastsidebaseballsoftball.org to sign up and like them on Facebook. Columbus threw it out of bounds off of Copley. And so 5.02 to go in this one. You can see the discouragement on the Riley faces here. As Saxton couldn't hit that one, and the rebound comes to Robinson. And he'll just wake it right down the lane for two, Isaiah, with five. At the other end, Worsham is fouled from behind by Tyson Lee. And Lee and Worsham sharing a chuckle over that one as you'll get another look at it from Aegis Dentistry. Pretty good uh, contact there. Lee has his second foul. Worsham with seven points tonight. His fourth year on the varsity. And he has shown tonight to be a really good defender. His career high came against Riley last year when he put 19 in against the Cats. And as Bo adroitly pointed out, free throw shooting will be something the Achilles heel for Adams perhaps. They get there enough. They just uh, got to have a better percentage. They were 70% in the first half. Missed them both. Robles for three. That's short. Here comes Columbus with numbers. We saw Wesley standing in front of him and decided to pull it back out. Tough night for Philip Robles. We know that he is a better shooter than that. Just hadn't. Uh, Hasn't gone down for him tonight. Has not scored a point. Averaging 12 a game coming in. Worsham, nice pass to Saxton underneath. He goes to work on Tyson Lee. Big bodies banging each other. Saxton gets his own rebound, puts it up, and it. Eight for Braden. Robinson at the other end to Lee. He'll go in and get the layup. First points of the night for the Western Michigan football commit. Defensive end for the Riley squad. Folks, Lather and Fade Shop has locations in South Bend, Granger, and Elkhart. Lather and Fade offers world-class barber experience for you, whether you want a vintage, classic, or modern look. Check out latherandfadeshop.com. Columbus is fouled there. That one's on Lee. And that would be the third on Tyson. And that puts Adams in the bonus. So Quintez Columbus, who has been, dare I say, good from the line tonight. He really has. The folks at South Bend Community School Corporation takes pride in its partnership with Ivy Tech's associate accelerated program called ASAP. This year, seven seniors from the class of 2021 will earn an associate degree worth two years of college credits along with their high school diplomas. Another four students will meet their Indiana College core requirements worth one semester of college credit. Save money and save time while you earn free college credit through the ASAP program and South Bend School. To learn more about this free opportunity, visit sb.school and search for ASAP. Saxton with the hammer. Worsham lost the handle. Wesley with the hammer. Blake with 16 tonight. Yeah, we have a little frustration there. Fifty-eight, thirty-eight, in favor of the Eagles. Adams will hold it outside. And a timeout called by Chad Johnston. It's sponsored by Eastside Youth Baseball and Softball. 2.44 to go in this one. Adams comfortably in front by 20 on 46. This edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you in part by St. Andrews Products. Their promotional products and branded apparel. 
Well, Chuck, when you look at the uh, performance of Adam, that balance that's been so treacherous for opponents, and they've really done a good job. But folks at John Adams Athletic Boosters provide tens of thousands of dollars to support all of John Adams Athletics. They sponsor team banquets and team and individual awards and letters. Over $3,000 in weight room supplies were purchased last year. Every team received direct financial support from the boosters last year, totaling over $30,000. Please support the Booster Club through spirit wear sales, volunteering to work concession stands, or to become a team rep for the Booster Club. Contact John Adams Athletic Department for more information on how you can join in and support the boosters. Lots of support at any high school, and especially one that's doing as well as Adams is under Principal Jim Seitz. A loyal listener to the Sports Jack podcast. <laughs> well, who isn't? Well, especially if they get to hear you sing. Not on the yak. Oh, no. That's that's on Pulse FM in the mornings. The yak is more highbrow, clearly. Here's Horsham down the lane for two. Chuck with nine tonight. Doug Adams in the game now for Riley. Where's number one? That's Coleman down the lane for two. Clay Coleman, the transfer from Marion, with his first basket of the night. And the bench will be cleared by Chad Johnston here on senior night. Well, hockey substitution coming up. Columbus down the lane, dishes it back to Jeffries. King in the corner for three. Not good. Riley the other way. And working down the floor, but missing. Saxton, will he get another? Yeah. Kind of an electrifying play, don't you think, Chuck? He's had a couple of them tonight. The Adams Eagles will go to 20 and 1 on the season thanks to this performance here tonight. And Chad Johnston bringing the five starting seniors out to a standing ovation from the Eagle faithful. Nice ovation from the crowd here. So you see Tommy Snyder is out there now along with Jesse Morgan, Gian Parks, Harry Jeffers. Cast of thousands out there. Meanwhile, Doug Adams held by Jeffers. That's the first on Harry. You, look, you see the uh, tightness and the cohesiveness of those Adams seniors as they went off the floor. Embracing their assistant coaches and head coach Chad Johnson. And they all had a look on their face, Chuck. Not like, hey, we beat Riley. It's like, this is what we do. We got to keep up this high standard. Got to play to our standard. Looks like Jeremiah Love has checked into the game now. Torrin Hunt. Riley trying to penetrate, but the shot goes off the side of the backboard by James Boyd. And the three on the way is missed. Rebound knocked around, and we've got a pushing foul called against Riley. It'll send Tommy Snyder, I believe, to the line. And Tommy, a 54% free throw shooter. James Boyd with the personal foul. Chuck, as you mentioned earlier, these two teams could meet again in the sectional. And uh, you probably ought to include Bo Hunt in this. I mean, how does Riley get better? How do they improve enough to be a threat to Adams in the sectional? Bo, your thoughts? I think the biggest thing is just, you know, their cohesiveness. I mean, they take they should take this game and watch this game film and study Adams. I mean, that's that's how you get better. Is you learn from a point that's a little bit better than you, and you take those and amplify them into your own game. And I think that's one of the biggest things with this game, Bill, is just go over it and go over it and go over it and watch how they play together. And I think that's what Riley needs to do as well. Damarian Spann leaves it off for Doug Adams. Osjean Williams battling for the rebound. Can't get it to go. Snyder gets the loose change, but it's stolen away by Coleman. 
Coleman dropped it off and it goes out of bounds to Adams with 18.4 seconds left. Well, you know, the toughest decision we might have coming up is who's going to be our player of the game. Well, I else. think that's a pretty easy decision in my mind. The guy that got him off to the great start and leads Adams in scoring tonight as the Adams Eagles win their 20th game of the season and extend their NIC win streak to 23 with a 63-40 triumph over the Riley Wildcats. Now stick around. We do have our post-game festivities, including our player of the game and our electrifying play of the game. It's next on the 46th game of the week. Thanks for watching the WHME TV 46 High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by... For the second straight year, the John Adams Eagles are the champions of the Northern Indiana Conference of Boys Basketball after a 63-40 win over their city rivals, South Bend Riley, tonight here at Hathaway Shack. Chuck and Bob, high above the fray and partner, we came into this game anticipating a, a great showdown, anticipating a Riley team that had been red hot, giving Adams all it wanted. Instead, what we saw was a dominating performance by the Eagles. And, you know, when you look at the numbers, it could have been even worse. Adams didn't shoot particularly well. They did get to 63 points in the ball game, but, well, they had opportunities maybe to score 75 or 80 points tonight. And uh, Adams uh, really did a good job defensively. They really frustrated Blake Wesley. Uh, he had a, you know, a good game, but not what they needed out of him. And uh, again, when you look ahead to a, a possible matchup again, there are some things that Riley can do different. And uh, but Adams just did what they do and they balanced scoring. They rebounded. They passed broke. They played defense. I mean, it's a very, very good basketball team. And the straw that stirs the drink and sometimes doesn't look any bigger than a straw out there <laughs> is the Adams point guard. He's standing by now with Bo Hunt. Standing by with our player of the game, Quintez Columbus. Hey, first off, double-double tonight, 14 points, 10 rebounds. Congrats on this victory tonight. Thank you. You're coming in tonight against this Riley team. Everybody expected, you know, a really tough battle out there. But right from the start, especially you and your teammates, you guys really came out and really set an example right from the start of the game. We, it, it's more of like a statement game for us. You know, late, lately we've been starting off really slow in the first half, so we just had to come out and be ready. 23 straight NIC victories for your club. Just talk about this senior group and what, how you guys are able to do that. We just all got love for each other. You know, we just play for each other and just motivate each other to get the win and be strong. Blake Wesley comes in here tonight, your cousin, averages 29 a game. You guys held him to a season low, only 16 points. What did it take to do that tonight? It took the team to hold, do it. You know, we practiced for this, you know, just come in and ready for him, knowing he's going to get some shots up, knowing he's going to make tough shots. So we just had to make it hard for him. What do you take away from this game, knowing that you guys have a possibility of playing these guys in two weeks? I just take this game as motivation, like knowing we can come in next game and just play hard. They're going to want to beat us, so we just have to keep it up and just go even out even harder. Play of our game. Congratulations. Thank you. Back to you guys. So Adams has a date with New Prairie next week while Riley has to turn around and play Mishawaka. But we have one more piece of business to take care of. You know, the band couldn't be here tonight, but there was a jam session anyway, and it was held by Braden Saxton with our electrifying plays of the game. Boy, they were electrifying. It came close to the end of the game, but he went up big uh, for a jam, and then uh, we thought, well, that's, there's our highlight. But what's happening here? Is this a replay? No, he did it again. And those are electrifying plays of the game brought to you by the electrical workers of Local 153. They're making our world brighter. And uh, boy, that team from Adams made this uh, a special night here at Hathaway Shack. It was senior night, and they played like the team that uh, everybody thinks they are. And there's going to be a lot of teams around the state looking at the video of this game and saying, well, how can we stop them? I'm not sure there's an answer. Well, the one thing that everybody will be keeping an eye on in that Plymouth sectional is not only who gets matched up with Adams, but that draw, which will be Sunday night, IHSA TV will have the draw for you. Greg Rakestraw will sort out all the teams, and we'll be keeping an eye on not only that Plymouth sectional that Adams is in, but the Elkhart sectional, the, the 3A sectional with St. Joe Merritt. Should be a fascinating night you to get anything, watch. You got anything going tomorrow? 
There is something going tomorrow. <laughs> now, as much attention as South Bend paid to this boys game tonight, I hope they pay that much attention to the Washington girls tomorrow. But our crew's got to get packed up so we can get over there. So let's go <laughs> ahead and roll the credits, and we'll tell you that tomorrow afternoon at 4 p.m. on TV 46, it's the girls 3A North Semi-State as the Washington Panthers take on the Norwell Knights to see who goes to Indianapolis for the state finals next week. And don't forget, we've got college basketball on the radio tomorrow. Big Ten doubleheader. Michigan State takes on Archie Miller in Indiana at noon. And then it's the Purdue Boilermakers going to Lincoln to take on Nebraska at 5.30. And a reminder to follow us on social media, on Twitter and Facebook. Now for my broadcast partners, the Hall of Famers, Bob Nigel and Bo Hunt, it's Chuck Freebie. Once again, the final, Adam 63, Riley 40. So long from South Bend.